to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hi, who's this? Yes, we're thrilled to welcome uh, competitor and choreographer extraordinaire Misha Gee. Misha, welcome to the skating lesson. Thank you, guys. Glad to be with you guys to the interview. Yeah, so we have seen you all about, your name has been everywhere, the recent national championships. I think we heard more about you in the last couple of weeks, even than when you were competing. We heard you about Russian nationals. We, heard, we saw you in Japan in the Kiss and Cry. So let's start with the nuts and bolts. We want to know about your career, but how did you get the call from Evgenia Medvedeva to choreograph a new short program for her? So uh, that was one of the days I was flying from Cup of Russia to Armenia, and we had a, a show out there. And then on the early morning, I got a text from Brian, which was uh, a big surprise for me as well. And, uh, you know, it was uh, early morning, unexpected. And when I received this text, I was, you know, very honored to be part of such a huge, you know, team and with so many great coaches that I have admired a lot and I have been taken from when I was skater. So yeah, it was it was big surprise, but also it was a very big challenge and very big claim to do one of, you know, world toppest female skater. So yeah, there was ever since I received that message and, and I sent the reply to Brian, like my brain were not stopping all the way like 24 7 open about all details and we have a lot of conversation with the entire team with brian and Evgenia, with all of them together to try to decide on the styles on the music on the timing on everything so yeah it was it was a big challenge it was very difficult for entire team and as well i have i have to go to czech republic and then i have another camp in armenia and then I have to change it. I have to cancel, buy a new ticket, fly out there, and um, do music at midnight. So yeah, it was. It was. It's not only for me. It was for all of us. But I'm very thankful and uh, and honored to be part of that journey. So who was actually the one then to choose Tosca? Did you throw out some ideas, or did they come to you with some of those ideas in place already? So. The way I work with my clients, skaters, uh, I always try to go very deeply into the process. So the few of the previous work I've done that was, you know, like uh, a Grand Prix Series skater, um, I always try to talk with the coach sometimes all the way. So I will ask like, team leaders or president on the details, you know, because uh, in my perspective, the teams and coach know the best about their skaters, what they're good at, what they're bad at. So I very respect their team and I try to work together, not like said, you know, like when I do some work, it's only about me and I want to do the thing. I, I like it or something. It, for me, the, the main priority is the skater. And my goal is to do the best for them and to bring us out of their teams because their team know the best about their skater. So in that process, I was talk a lot with Brian. I talk a lot with Evgenia. And we had, we all was having ideas. So we, uh, we, we talked with Brian and we have the direction we want to go when we understand since we have three weeks till nationals, it was very short. So the focus on that. So based on all those criteria, we start picking musics, and then Brian sent few styles. I pick few styles, and Eugenia have idea too. So we all put those. There was about I think five to seven music we put on the table, and one of idea that I was sent to Brian was Tosca. Mm -hmm. So and Tosca had many variation. But this variation is quite special. And since, you know, uh, what I heard from the team they, um, and Evgeny as well, we want to go to not opera version uh, as her preference and as the team decision. So I tried, I have one of very um, beautiful piece of Tosca that is very deep, but same time very powerful. And so I send it to them and then um, I think I sent a couple of music at the same time to Evgenia. 
I sent to Brian and Eugenia, and Eugenia listened it, and he's like, I'm quite strong about it. I'm like, okay, then let me send you another one and listen to this one. She's like, oh, that's good too. But then she got very attached to that one, and I said, listen, well, I feel Tosca could be really show, you know, a lot of your strong sides. And one of the focus is to show the feminine skating in the beauty, but same time of the strong passion of her. You know, she have this like power in her, like this fire. So this is very important thing that we try to bring out of her. But of course, this was very big challenge because of timing. That's the biggest issue, you know. So, but at the end, after all this music, that's the one we all felt the best and one of the most she felt inside out of her. So I'm just curious, like when you're given a task like this, when there was already a short program in place, does that become difficult for you to then go enter the rink and reduce like, or, or, or what is that process like? Did, did you have well, to discuss why she was unhappy with the first one in order to make sure she was more happy with, with your short program? Well, you know, I think David did a great job. I am I'm very admire him and uh, he is master of his work and uh, it's still teacher for me. I very respect him. And I still feel he did a great job. I just feel uh, Evgenia probably need more time. You know, because David do very high skill uh, level programs and you really have to be high crafted skater to capable to show amazing thing like, you know, he done for Yuna and Yuna with years practicing cricket and Brian, mm -hmm. her skills was very high of, of all round skating, you know, and it's not, it's she already female skating. So she had a lot of things. So, and she was capable to show high skill uh, program like David did. I feel you're getting a little bit more, more time, you know. Eventually, I think after, a, you know, maybe a little bit more time, she will be capable to show this program and will be, will way, way amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it was big, it was very difficult challenge to, um, to do something that she feel good, she feel comfortable, but same time show something new out of her. Mm. So it's combination of good sides of her, of something new sides of her, you know. Mm. That was very challenging. And when, let's say we do summer, you have a few months, that's very easy to, you know, to let her skate for maybe a month or two and let her feel, let uh, Brian and Tracy see what is good for her, what is bad her, for her, what we can change, you know. So we can adapt to the situation, but there is no time. There are three weeks. Yeah. And and it's not like a senior B competition. It's a Russian national that's deciding if you're going or not going. You know, there's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And it's not only for us as skater, uh, for coaches, for a choreographer, but it's a lot of pressure for skaters. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was that was the thing that we have to find. was hard, of course, for me to find a very good balance that is capable for her to feel good and, like, ready to go, you know. So, yeah, that was so, one of the things. So it's our understanding then that they're going to have a skate off potentially in Russia for the World Figure Skating Championships team uh, where she'll most likely skate these programs again. Once you have created a program for someone like her, do you get to now go back and refine that program with her? Or how, how often do you get to go back and work with that? Well, we, with my skater that I've done before, I always try to keep in touch. You know, I always, when I have possibility, I try either I'm flying to them or either if we have competition, maybe at the same country, then I try to visit them, you know. So uh, some of the program I've done before, I try to retouch from two to four times in the year. Mm. Okay. Or also like, you know, if I could not come, I'll try ask them to send me video. I try to ask them what they feel good, what they feel not good. And uh, I tr also try to ask uh, what the reaction from the judges, you know, what they feel we can do more, where we can do more difficult for more PCS, where we can, you know, there's a lot of things. And also talk with their coaches, what they feel about it. Like, because coaches might be saying, you know, that's that's a good transition, but we have considered their jumps. So maybe we can change it. Okay, 
fine, no problem. If I'm here, I'll try to change it. If we don't have any option, if it's emergency, fine. Let them coaches change something, feel comfortable for them, and or just you know do on the play they are. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. Okay. Um, so now we also saw you working with Kazuki Tomono at Japanese Nationals, complete other side um, of the world. You know, now he's such a talented up and coming skater. You know, there's so many big stars in Japan. So how long have you worked together and what are you trying to bring out of Kazuki? So we started work since this season mm-hmm. from summer. So it was uh, so we started from how it was started in Milan after World Championship. Japanese Federation come to me and um, they asked me uh, was wish that I can choreograph for Kazuki from this year. Mm-hmm. So, of course, it was, you know, I'm appreciative for their trust. And, of course, they're looking, you know, to um, Kazuki as one potentially good senior uh, Team Japan skater for the future. So they want to see him build up and grow. And they also understand, you know, things don't take quickly. It takes time. So if they want to see him in a few years to be a very good uh, world skater, they start work on it earlier. And so we start from the program, uh, which was short, and then, but by working on that, you know, uh, they also send, uh, they also give me a few things they want to see him to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have wrote them down in the notes. And when we met with Kazuki and uh, his coach, so I, it was one of few main criteria we have, and we try to improve through the program. Mm-hmm. So by the creating this program there's a few things we want him to improve in this season and learn so he's capable to grow and but at the same time you can if you want to grow and improve in that you can't just create one program and leave it there you have to improve your skills so the good program only can be good goodly executed and be improved if you're improving your skills mm-hmm. right so um, while I was staying in Japan, I was being there for a few weeks in summer. I always give him a lot of practice exercise and like homework that he had to improve. So, but, but at the same time, not only by that, I was teaching him other stuff as well. So we kind of become a team with his coach and they were also was happy and wished that we can have long partnership and work on that. And so step by step, we start work together as a team. So, well, now after, let's say, more than half year work, I will actually more say I'm not his choreographer. I'm more as his coach, you know. Mm -hmm. So we together with um, his coach, Taijin, you know, uh, been teaching him over 10 years since he was a little baby. And I respect, so, you know, I respect his work. And uh, we have good understandings, you know, I try not, you know, too much across my line because Mm -hmm. I understand the foundation they built. It was by many years and they build a lot of good things. So based on those good things, I try to teach him even more, you know, not say Mm -hmm. like, you know, okay, break out those things, throw it away. I got to teach you new stuff. No, Mm -hmm. not that way. Like. And, and then I always uh, communicate with his coach, even though we have language barrier because not that easy for them to speak in English. But still, I try sometimes to simplify English and speak slowly with simple words and sometimes show technique or show the movement. So um, through this month, we through this few months, we found a better communication and then eventually better understandings how to improve him. So when you talk about skills, you were talking about trying to bring out passion with Yevgenia. Now with Kazuki, is that more skating skills? Is it projection? You know, facially, what kind of homework are you giving him? There's so much. So there's actually through this half year, mm-hmm. uh, I split uh, his routine on let's say three step probably. So the summer there was some basic preparation on foundation of his skating skills on his movements body and extension Mm -hmm. and then later on there were more technical aspect his power his um gym routine uh he's um uh he's all-around skating Mm -hmm. uh, um 
some of his pins, which is I'm still not happy about. <laughs> uh, and then, and then third step when I was this, I was also uh, giving him a little bit more advanced routine. So there was also psychology, his rest, his recovery, um, his mindset. You know, so so honestly, there's so much behind scene work I tried to do with him. And as well, when he was in LA, I tried to take him to my teacher. So my coaches, my dad and mom worked with him on different aspects. Uh, I tried to take him to uh, another of my mentor, Philip Mills, uh, to check up on him and uh, also to my ballet teacher. Um, so, and I took him to dance classes in Hollywood, which is Millennium. It's one of the most difficult and craziest dance studio you can have. So. It's like a lot of those little aspects. But uh, I also understand that case that, you know, I try to give him a lot of information, but to really to be able to understand this information, to be, to be able to put in your head and really execute, it takes time. The thing I've been learned, it was takes years and years and years. And it's not only in one country, it's been travel around the world, been taught by my parents, be taught by a lot of great world successful coaches and choreographer and, and it took years for me so it's same for him you know it, it's gonna take it's gonna take time but hopefully slowly step by step we can move forward now you mentioned psychology and trying to build that up yeah so you also Evgenia obviously had a very difficult season um and we didn't, you know, she had a good long at the Nationals. You know, the short wasn't successful, although we just saw her in Italy do the short program beautifully. So did you feel like you needed to give her that extra boost of confidence and come in there? No, I, actually, actually, we've been talking about that for years. Okay. So it was, it's not a new thing. It's not a new thing. Even when we were competing, sometimes we will communicate about the thing that athlete, you know, mm. athlete minds and change. So... Uh, you know, we're changing some ideas and some uh, information. So it's not a new thing. And uh, I've been tried to encourage her since we were competing as athletes. Mm -hmm. So and, and still now on, I try to tell her a lot of the things, you know, and some of the thing I said, you know, it's, it's not only my knowledge, it's some knowledge of our teachers who, who were taught Olympic champions, world champions, you know, like, Mr. Frank Carroll, Alex Emission, Tatiana Tarasova, Brian Orser, uh, Philip Mills. There's so many amazing teacher I'm thankful. And mm -hmm. so it's not only my knowledge, it's their knowledge. And I try to share with my skaters those knowledge I have to them. And of, of course, I mean, I, I try to share with her, but uh, I, I also understand that this year uh, quite a bit different mm -hmm. compared to she had before. So it's of course, it's a little bit different and a little bit more difficult than before. But eventually, I think step by step, it will be there. Mm -hmm. Now, it's impressive how quickly your career in choreography has really taken off. I remember seeing a couple videos of you on Instagram, you know, working with Gracie Gold or working with some skaters. And then you started doing programs. And now we see you working with so many skaters. So how did you begin? Did you plan it what you wanted to do? Did you have the vision yeah. when you were still? How yeah. did that come about? So first of all, uh, there's so much art going on in my family. So if take to back generation, my grandfather, when he was uh, in his 20s, he was doing figure skating as well. And in his um, later years, he was professional painter and actor in movies. So very deep roots of uh, roots in what of country art in was he family. doing movies in china in china, in china. Okay. in china yeah he probably did there around 30 movies oh, wow yeah okay. and he have hundred or maybe thousands of paint work and actually this month it should be in north of china in his hometown there should be a muse a art museum in his name will be open Oh, wow. So it's huge collection. I'll, I'll send you guys later yeah. some pictures so you guys can see. So it's very back from, it started from my grandfather. Then my dad, he was a Chinese uh, senior medalist, national medalist in single skating. And then 
So he skated about 20 years in singles. And the last five years, he was skating ice dancing. And he was studying in Russia and back in Soviet Union in the 80s with Natalia Dubova, which mm, is interesting, legendary. I so think. around the Usava and Zulin era when they're yes, Dubova. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Sometime like they were on the same ice with Plato. Yeah, you know? okay. So, so this kind of thing. And later on, he was a national team coach of single and later on national team coach of ice dancers. So that's one thing. Then my mom, she was Soviet Union team and top few spots. Later on, she was a uh, choreographer. So my mom graduated musical high school, uh, dance university on the choreography courses and sport university on figure skating course. Interesting. So, so there's a lot of things. So people, you know, people look at me and sometimes say, "Hey, Misha, like you're so lucky. Like, look, you're doing this and that." I'm like, "Um, well, you know, it was since little, you know, mm -hmm. like my parents, my parents and my grandparents have those roots. So it's been transferring generation into mm -hmm. generation, and then a lot of education going on. Like when I was little, my grandfather always like put me in the classical music, let me watch more ballet, and he himself in his 80 years old, he was still doing ballroom dancing. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of about this. And then, so it's a lot from the family. And then my mom doing my choreography since I was little, you know, and she do for a lot of Chinese national team skaters. Some of them went to world, some of them went to Olympic. And those era when it was like 90s and 2000 and the Chinese have one of the first quads in the world. So you know, Chen Zheng Li, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was early Chen Zheng Li and Yu Fei Li, um, Zhen Xingguo. It was it was a lot of Chinese mm. stars at that time. And and so a lot of influence from my mom, you know, she was did a lot of these big works and I was like in the ring on the side will be look how she's doing those choreography. Mm. And then later on that my mom started doing my choreography. And then so little by little, I started learning from it. And since little, I also love to dance, you know, like just turn up the music. I'm just like ready to shake up the dance floor. So and then I start do my my choreography little by little. I start do pieces and I start do step sequence. And then it's become eventually the whole, whole program. So my parents, uh, it, it was I think about maybe more than 10 years ago. My parents decided to say, okay, since now you're doing your own choreography, it's for your future study, you know? So I started doing my own piece. Of course, it was more challenging than just do small parts, but it's also was interesting for me to learn from, you know, all kind of inspiration you see around the world. And then slowly some other skaters like see my program, they like it. And they're like, Misha, who did your program? I'm like myself. And they're like, no. No, I'm like, um, yes, yeah, that's me. So they're like, I can't imagine. So they, they <laughs> kind of can't believe it at first, like, like I, I, I can do that. It's not say I'm, I'm good. No, it's just like people not expecting at that age I can, can do those programs. Uh, and at the same time, my dad put me in the Chinese Dance Academy. Then he put me in the um, different Hollywood dance studios. And he keep giving me a lot of material of learning of professional dancers and my mom also will, will teach me that at home as well uh and then so i start learning more and more and then i start doing some other people program um even, let me see it's about eight years ago my dad used to teaching dice murakami mm -hmm. daisuke murakami and so he was teaching then and at the same time uh I don't remember how it was happened, but then it was decision was uh, and and Dice was one wanted as well, as I believe uh, to do one of his program. Mm -hmm. So I was did his I think uh, Lori did Lori Nicole did his free program that year, and I did his short program. And so and then other skater, Japanese skater and Russian skater, was start asking me as well. So it was start you know more and more people asking me for. And then I was a little bit more focused about my competition and probably 
around 2014, 15, there's more Russian people start asking me to do choreography. Like uh, Yelena Radionova was asked me on early days was to do a, one of her gala. And very close at the same time was Anna Pogorelia was sending me a text regarding, and they say, uh, she said that she and her coach is very enjoy and like my choreography. So they want next year program, I will choreograph for her, you know? So she was already like very top skater at that time. And Nikolai Morozov did very great works for her. So it was also like, you know, it was those people who was asking me, it was it was also surprising for me that they reached me because they're very high level skaters, you know? And yeah, it was, it was also, for me appreciation to work with this kind of as when I was still competing, you know? So yeah. And it was little by little, I started doing more and more and people see my works and well, first of all, people always questioning say, well, come on, he's an active skater. Like, you know, and he do a good work and, and, and they're very high titled. They're already like world medalists. So a lot of people were like, mm, now, but later step by step, you know, when we did the work and the people see work, they're like, well, that's not a bad program. And they're like, who did that? They're like, Misha. They're like, what? No, no, that could be, that, that can be, you know? So step by step, the people see my works a little bit more and they start more um, looking a little bit more into my work instead of look at uh, the name, you know? Because I kind of knew for that time. So, and I'm an active skater and I have to do to a skater who is, have more titles than me, you know? So of course there's a lot of words, but eventually people more start focusing on the work. And, and then we we'll start more and more people asking me and I have to, uh, so another was difficult challenge. It's to, to combine these two professions at the same time. When you're a full-time athlete that have to compete Olympic and world championship, you have to give like, um, 24 seven to focus on yourself and work hard every day. But at the same time, you start to do not only for worth elite skater, but you start to do for your competitors. <laughs> you know, that was, that was also a funny moment when, uh, I, uh, Alex Demishin asked me to come to work, uh, with his team and choreographer, a few of his skaters. And I'm not sure yet who I'm like, is it junior? Is it novice or whatever? And he's like, okay. This senior boy, this senior boy, and I'm like, okay, sure, let's do it. And it was it was fun moment because I know I had compete with them, and I'm gonna compete next season too. And uh, even more funnier, it became when we were on the same competition, on the same group, <laughs> and skating back to back. So it's like before my free program, there's another my free program begin, and you watch, it, you're just like. But I was smiling. It was smiling of joy, you know. It just it's so amazing to see your works compete with you, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was great feeling. And then I think some of commentators were saying like it will be very funny. I, I think uh, when we were com competing, our actual order was changed, and I competed before. Uh, I think it was Alexander Petrov mm -hmm. uh, um, was skated after me. And I think commented amateur, the Russian or the the American one said it will be very funny to see Misha in Kiss and Cry with Alexei Mishin and spoiling this guy say, oh, okay, look, that step sequence was level three or level four. Yeah. No, that, <laughs> no, you have to check this out. So it will be very funny to see Misha sitting right there in his costume <laughs> and talk about another skater, his program, you know. Yeah, so it was kind of funny. I think we throw a joke with Alex and Misha and said, so, uh, uh, Professor, so what I should do, should I skate my program that put my guards on and run to Kiss and Christ stand with yours? What, what should I do? Yeah, so it was kind of those moments. Yeah, and then now it's more uh, became into the full-time for skaters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not one-day success. It's very long process that start from early days of my skating. So when you first started choreography, um, doing these kinds of programs for higher level skaters while you were still competing in things, was there any balancing of personalities? Like how did you find 
that approach, being someone of the same age. You were working with Gracie Gold, you were working with Elisabetta, you were working with Anna and one of our favorite programs. When I fell in love with the Scent of a Woman program, I thought it was one of the best ones she ever did. Um, how, how are you balancing those different personalities when you go to create when they're already, you know, sort of high level athletes like that? Well, the first of all, as I said previously, I tried to to come up with them together, you know, with their team. Like I, for me, I always ask skater like what they want, what they feel, and and based on that, I will recommend them some stuff. But we will talk together. It's not like I feel that, do that. You know, that's mm -hmm. it, done. There is there is no way to talk about it. I always try to feel, you know, I always try to bring their heart out. So if they feel that thing, they can skate it with heart. They can skate it with joy. And same time, that's going to be transferred to the audience and to the judges. You know, so it's very important for me to understand what they want and what they feel. Uh, and the same time, of course, I try to find this balance between as an active skater and as a choreographer coach, you know. So from some perspective, I will be strict and very detailed and on the levels and so I will be standing at the point of the choreographer coach. But same time, sometime um, I'll be switching mode into more like, you know, feel we're a skater, so they feel more comfortable and easier to understand what I try to approach them. So it's a combination of those two in one. Mm. <laughs> so now we know that you have a very international background. You were talking about your parents. We know that you speak Russian, ma Mandarin, and English. And you said that you were... <laughs> learning some Japanese while you're over there. So can you kind of bring up, like, where were you really raised? Like, we know that you've spent time in China, sometimes in California, you've spent time in Russia. So where did you, you know, where do you feel like you grew up? Where, you know, how did, walk us through the timeline, I guess, of your early life. One place, world. World, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, I'm born in, in Moscow and uh, nearly 10, 10 years old, I was staying in, uh, in Russia and practice and train in Russia. Sometime I visit uh, China with my mom, uh, but mostly until 10, I was in, in Russia. And then from tell, 10 to 18, I was in China, including Hong Kong and Taiwan as well. So from 18 on till nowadays, I, most time I was in LA, except the time when I was running. So it was, it was, it was pretty much around the world. You know, it's not only three country, it's not only three culture, but it's also a three continent. You know, they're mm -hmm. completely different. So yeah, I mean, but I'm also, you know, l lucky in this way that I be able to learn from three very strong skating schools of the mm -hmm. world you know us china russia they all very individual and they are very unique in their own way and they have very uh amazing things to learn so of course in this way like i'm i'm, I'm thankful to have this opportunity to learn from mm -hmm. so so then given your your various backgrounds and various countries that you were residing in was there ever a question for for you guys as a team to as to which country to represent well, there was actually, uh, I had a few options. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when I was living in China, that time I was, uh, when we moved to States, I had a few country options to represent. You know? So there were many options, but um, there, was, there was a lot of difficulty to, to have my past till this day to compete all this competition. Uh, and it was a lot of on parents' shoulder and mm -hmm. my own family, you know. Mm -hmm. wasn't much support as it could be done. And it's not like they don't want. It's just the structure of the sport and the country. It's not allows you to have a lot of support. So mm -hmm. basically, you have to done everything by your own. Mm -hmm. and we have a few people in Federation that would strongly support me since my early days on international stage. They do their best. But there's layers on top of it that cannot be changed and by circumstances, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was very tough to um, to all the things we go through. But for my my parents and my coaches was one of the important things to have me opportunity to compete in international, mm -hmm. you know, to have this uh, this chances 
to be traveled, to be learned, to be seen, you know, so that I can learn more stuff and to improve myself. Yeah, but of course, you know, like people said before when I just start competing, say, hey, look, Misha, you, you, you don't have that much like, you know, inner competition challenge. Like in the U.S., we have to go like reg- regional, sectional, nationals, right? There's a lot of players yet you have to compete. And it's similar in Japan as well. So they're like, you're lucky you don't have to do that. You can go pretty much direct to international. I'm like, yes, in this case, it's more easy for me than you. But there's a lot of other things for me much more difficult than you. I don't have doctors. I don't have teams. I don't have like background support. All the document I have to do myself, visa I have to apply myself, ticket I have to get myself, like invitation to send the like bunch of things. So there, I'm lucky I have opportunity to compete that, but they didn't fell on my head. Mm-hmm. I have to fight for them and go through a lot of difficulty and difficult things to get them done, you know, so, but I'm, I'm still very thankful to the entire team that and you learned a lot too, I'm. clearly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, people were joking actually, because I have to don so many visas and I think you guys probably, some of my fans know, like I have so much problems with visa. Like last year, uh, in France Grand Prix, I get my visa six or four hours before my flight. <laughs> like eight hours before my flight, they say no. So I always try to be very nice and long, long talking with their consul and explain the situation. And I already understand I might not go into that Grand Prix. And it's not the first time. Uh, and But thanks God it was happening. I got my visa done. But I done so many visa and there are so many difficult uh, difficulties to apply it and so much documents you have to, to bring. Some of my fans were joking, said, Misha, you should open a travel agency. <laughs> How much yeah. experience you have for years for those visa, you really should open triple A's. You'll be good. Already. Yeah. So who did you really look up to in the sport? Obviously, your parents played a big role, but were there other skaters? Because you had such a Russian upbringing, such a Chinese upbringing. You know, yeah. did you idolize anyone in particular? Well, I have very, very few skaters that I've been look up since little, mm-hmm. you know, and they were been my inspiration. So it's very hard to say, you know, that for particular one Mm -hmm. there's very few i mean if we name them well the very favorite was uh, when i was growing up it was plushenko and takahashi Mm -hmm. plushenko and takahashi and but as well i was i I very like uh yagudin Mm -hmm. Uh, i very like emmanuel sandu Mm -hmm. uh i very like johnny jeffrey uh so there were many of these people. I, I like Shizuka Rakawa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Shannon Zhao at their like craziest years. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of everything, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, and those years, there's so many individual skater with their own look, you know, like mm-hmm. they're also different. So there's so much to learn from, you know, so there's, very hard to see someone that is alike. Mm-hmm. There's also different. So those years were quite unbelievable and amazing in their in their own way. And because you're the child of coaches, were you skating with high level skaters on the same ice when you were a young kid? Like an influence? Not always. No, no okay. Okay. not always. Because my condition was not easy. In mm-hmm. some case, like you know, when I was in China competing Chinese uh, juniors and seniors. I, I, we don't have condition at that time and we have to skate in the small rink. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a little bit more than the half size of the Olympic one. Mm -hmm. And then you have to come to national competition, compete with those boys who are doing like triple axel and they will be practicing on, on the full size arena. And you're going first day on your practice and you skate in the center because you get used to the small eyes. And since we travel a lot, and my parents been working in different countries, so sometimes you have to skate. Like when I was in Hong Kong, I have to skate in the public session where it's about hundred or hundred plus skaters, like like walking, you know. Mm-hmm. And they're only walking one direction. Like you're not allowed to go flip a, a lutz, like going a turn. You have to go this way do lutz, mm-hmm. you know. So. There was a lot of difficult conditions, so I was 
not that much time I have opportunity to skate with high elite, mm -hmm. you know. So, but it's also taught you a lot of a lot of strong things, you know, to be to be capable for all kind of conditions. I, I actually learned how to skate on the small uh, ice as well, but I liked to. I was the only one. I was the only one on the ice uh, during that time, so it was nice. <laughs> it's a trade off, yeah. yeah. Well, Misha, you talk about like having skated so much in China and in Russia and in California, all these different things with various different coaches. With Misha, I know you worked a bit with Frank Carroll, all of these sorts of things. Do you find that culturally that there were different technical approaches in general? Because um, it's something we kind of observed this season. We're sort of looking at more of like a Russian school of jump technique or a Japanese school. Did you experience any of that firsthand in training in different countries? Yes. Yeah. Well, they they are quite different. Like from their from their tech basic, from their like off ice workout, how to make their body stronger, uh, from the routine from the jumps amount uh, and just general from the technique like maybe one country the arms go more to the side another country arms go more to the back you know so, so yeah they're they're very different everywhere have their own thing so you were so, like with Mishin and Frank sorry Jonathan, I was looking no at it's you. the same question it's the same yeah <laughs> so you worked with Mishin and Frank like yeah. how would you do how would you compare them like what were their training styles you know, not many people work with both. So what did, you know, what was it like? What did you get from each of them? Well, I mean, it's really hard to, um, you know, describe it in a couple of words. It, it's, it's a lot of different technical aspects, like especially when you go on the jump, like, mm -hmm. you know, your timing, your, your arms movement, your legs Frank movement. Frank used to like it like this, power. right? Yeah. Well, but see, in this case, they're a little bit close. They're both a mm -hmm. little bit leaning more into your your right side. Yeah. So you know your your arms position is a bit close. Mm -hmm. So this is the similarity. But maybe your swinging leg could be different. Then your lots and flip direction could be a little bit different, and your arms rotation could be also different. So there's there's many different things. You know, mm -hmm. for me, it was important to combine the mm -hmm. best of them and also to find the thing that worked best for me you know mm -hmm. because we we all human we all different so something worked for one people might not that well work for another people but when you have two master professor of this thing, there there are so much things to learn but it's important for you to find how to balance them well so it can be best for you how about with run-throughs? I mean, would Mishin do the same number of run-throughs to prepare that Frank would do? And we know that Frank likes to do them every day, full programs. You know, are you doing the same number with Mishin? Yeah, well, see, um, Frank was, uh, I, I'm very thankful to Frank about his run-through. Like, he was always teaching us, like, uh, to do a whole piece, no matter what condition, you know. Mm -hmm. When I was working with Mission at that time I was a peak of the season, so it was a little bit different. Because, like, even the system is different. See, like, in States, you, you're going to come with your, your, like, music card, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to slide it to the board, and you're going to wait your order, and then to skate, right? So, in Russia, it can be different. If the coach said you go to run through, you're going to go run through no matter how many people in the line. <laughs> So it's a little bit different structure, you know, like I got, I gonna, I'm doing my whole run through same. I do as here with Frank, I, I will do with Frank or with my parents. Uh, I will do same with Misha and he will not like change it too much for me because I was in com uh, competitive season. Mm -hmm. So he will, he will keep, let me do my thing, you know, then he skater, he might be approached a little different, you know, like, uh, Maybe he may, well, see, that's another thing. It's, there's more opportunity to go more run through in Russia because mm -hmm. if coaches say you go two times, mm -hmm. then the music stop, that skater goes. Here, we have to follow the order. We all equal and we have to put a music key. So you put and you wait on the line. So even if you want to go two, three runs through, you might not make it because there's a lot of people on the ice. So it's a little different approach, you know. I do they do more way. sections in Russia than they do in the U.S.? Sometimes they do like. Series. I think a little bit more, a little yeah. bit more. But okay. see, I'm not. It's it's hard to say if it's their own preference of their school, 
-hmm. or it's also because the thing that I mentioned, the capability. Mm -hmm. Because in Russia, it's skating, uh, they work by their professional skating club. So that ice, let's say, only maintained to that three, uh, only will be for the three coaches. And those coaches have maybe total 20 professional skaters on the ice. So it's only for them. Then in the States, we might skate freestyle, we might skate public, and there it could be like senior and junior and those level skaters. So it could be, you know, like it's hard to get this ordered the way they do in Russia, you know. But if from parts, I will say, yeah, sometimes maybe because of that, it's world more easy to coaches say, okay, do that section again, put the music. Mm-hmm. So they have this uh, possibility to do that. When in States, this will be a little bit more difficult, right? But it, it, not everywhere. But still, if we say parts, I will say they do a little more. So what brought you to Frank originally? I hope I'm not confusing you. No, I'm no I, I think I was following. I yeah. Understand, uh, the approach. Uh, so what brought you to California originally to work with Frank? So my dad and mom was wish I can have a lot of learning experience in states. So it was a combination of my parents moved to here uh, to work as coaches, at the same time to let me have a great skating school to learn from. That was one of the reasons. And then one of the first play where we started was Lake Arrowhead. Mm-hmm. So that time I think Frank was more in Toyota Center, but sometimes he come visit uh, to Lake Arrowhead because uh, he was used to uh, teach so many great skaters at that time in Lake Arrowhead back then. So. Um, yeah, he would start visit, and of course, I, my parents and myself wanted to learn from Frank. And so little by little, we start, you know, work together. And then some of my, my parents' students, they also sent to Frank to ask to work with them and to, to gain more knowledge. So that's how it started step by step. And then later on, we were in Palm Spring for a bit, so we were more often working together. And then later, we're Toyota. So yeah, it was, it was for a few years, so... But yeah. so basically, California was kind of home base for you during yeah. during yeah. the big during those okay. years, yeah. Okay, and then I'm intrigued because out of the gate, I have always remembered you as like a complete like fan favorite. So, d- were you aware of that kind of following from the beginning? Did you notice that that was happening at a certain time? Was that something you were seeking out, or that you sort of went with once you discovered you had that kind of appeal? Well, no, it was it was step by step. Yeah, it was step by step. I mean, because I mean, I, I didn't I started not as like top 10 skater, right? I'm like from very back, like slowly moving, moving forward. So, yeah, but but fan base also was slowly growing. And I mean, you know, it's hard to say for me. I mean, I think it, we have asked fans why I have that so many fans and I'm very thankful to them because without their support it will not not be the way I am now but um, I think one of the things I try to do for fans is to show my heart in skate you know no matter what I do no matter what difficulty I'm capable for or I'm trying for I always try skate it with heart and when you do with heart people can feel it so I think that's why people felt the passion I show on the ice with, with my skating, with my heart. They feel that heart. And they try to do the same in return. They try to support you, send you messages, and go to your competition. So, yeah, I, I will feel it's, it's, it's a mutual connection, you know, mm-hmm. between. Like, even though we're not always meeting face-to-face, it was distant there in the audience, right? I'm a skater, but still, we, we feel that, you know? Yeah, there's something Dave and I notice sometimes, like when we look at these programs under the IJS system, that some people like go through the motions, right? They've been given this great choreography, but they're just kind of doing it. And there's something like authentically raw and honest, you know, in your choreographic sequences and your footwork sequences that are so exciting, but I'm intrigued because you're able to find that in so many different styles, but is that something you build into the program or I'm just intrigued by that kind of release that could always happen in, in those kinds of moments? Well, one of the, one of the goal was for our team. And I mean, that, I mean, mostly my team was 
my my dad coach and my mom coach you know so uh and plus a lot of my mentors so it was for our this team it was always um a goal to be creative mm -hmm. to try something new and learn something new from new style you know so it's always about growth process you know was uh, that's why for many years i always try very uh big contrast style you know like i remember one year i was like okay i want to do something very black and then i want to do something very white you know so i was i was did uh painted black in the short program and then i was doing nutcracker and free program so it's like in a short program you like this uh a dark creature that is like crawling out of the earth and you know like a lot of darkness with this heavy metal uh and then in free program you're like that elegant prince like you're trying to show you know so uh yeah it was it was we tried to do that a lot but also i will say because of that that taught me a lot about different genre and style to be capable to do as choreographer mm -hmm. you know you're not locked in only in one way you learning you learning you learning and that also gives you new experience to create more of that to other people i'm remembering like wild hair and costumes when you were younger too is that yeah true? am i remembering yeah. correctly now you're so yep. like regal but back in the day when you first came up <laughs> i feel like you had like the crazy hair and everything going on. yeah 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 Yeah. there were uh it was sochi olympic and then uh that time i was like okay well you know you might be one time in the olympic and this is huge <laughs> achievement so why would not you just do it with full heart out and let people remember you right mm -hmm. So it was actually another, also a tip from a few of my mentors that, you know, uh, you, Olympic, it's once in a lifetime could be. So it's your moment. You should be, and you always like to do it with hard. Why not to do it full out? So I was like, okay, well, we can do more. So I remember even costume design for Olympic. Uh, I was, uh, uh, my costume designer was, I think, got very tired. Um, uh, it's actually Yelena. Uh, she uh, do a lot of costumes, and uh, I've been working with her for a few years. And that time I was one combine so many styles and make it great and bright. I think she drew like twenty five design, and then I used final one to do it. She so drove her did... crazy. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm thankful to her. You know, she was handle that. She keep drawing it, and she did a, a very good piece so far. So yeah, and, and then later on on that, I was like, wait, I want, why not do something more bright? You know, you, you have to be in the character more deeply. And since short program, I have uh, still got blues by Gary Moore. So it was like blues rock program was that guitar. So you, you have to be Phil Rocky, kind of like rock star. And I kind of have this orange outfit with like thunders and the splits here with black we so remember I, yeah I, I you're not afraid of color hair. misha yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i want to do orange hair so it was more like to be full in character you know mm -hmm. and i was like wait there's no rules about hair right mm -hmm. if you dye it another color okay let's do it and then free program i had a uh we call it uh, a ballroom dance collection because it was have a, it started with the neo tango which is electric mm -hmm. tango then turning into Roomba, switching into uh, electric jive, and finish up with rock and roll. So it was pretty much all the ballroom kind of dance together. And I, I went like, okay, we need something even more colorful. So we did the pink hair. So, but there's one, 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 one trick, which is at that, at that time, there's not that much product that really can dye your hair in the moment. Like right now, we find, we have a lot of sprays. You can go to Target, CVS, or like mm -hmm. all these places find the, the, the color changing stuff. That time, they don't have you. So I was in the morning, I was brown, like mm -hmm. like natural color. Uh, and then at night, I was like very colorful. I remember uh, when I get off my free program, I think uh, New York Times and Cosmopolitan, I think. They were asking me, said like, 
we're wondering, like they're asking me interview, and I'm like, wow, New York Times, well. Yeah. This is important journalism, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I'm, they have only one question, but I'm thankful for that. They're like, we're wondering how you were brown in the morning and then you were like pink in the night. I'm like, my secret, not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get it without this getting it? Question. I mean, are you worried that your scalp is going to turn so, color? That was, so, yeah. that was hard, actually. If you part of my podcast. It was hard. It was hard. Like, actually, by the end of performance, my costume at the white part got dyed into pink. Like, you can't see it, like, mm -hmm. from far perspective, but from close, you can't see it. So it was at that time, actually, I saw and I heard it from Korean pop star. They always dye their hair super quick. And, like, they don't dye it. They just, like, apply something and then, bam, the color is. So it was hair chalk. Hair chalk. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So it's kind of the one the kids using to draw on the on the ground. But they have specific one for hair that you can order in Korea. So I found those. And you have to do your hair like wet and kind of bit hot. And you start do piece by piece, try to cover up with chalk so it's like covered into colors. It was a long process. It was long yeah, process. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Commitment. This is okay. way more interesting than jump technique, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, it was like 100% to be in the character. Yeah. So in 2015, I feel like that was such a great season for you. I remember watching you at the World. You skated so well. We were watching with friends of mine. My friend was going absolutely insane. She was on your bandwagon. Uh, and you really were a very complete classical skater in the free skate that year. What do you think, you know, made that difference for you in 2015 to get you so successful at the Four Continents and again at the World Championships? A fall. Okay. So it was great Olympic uh, for me. So for myself, because, you know, I, for me, the most goal and for my team always to skate best version of me. Mm-hmm. And of course, we have to focus on levels, we have to focus on points, we have to focus on difficulty. But for me, I always competing with myself. I always look at my competitors and mm. I, you know, I respect and learn from them. And but for me it was always to do better than I did last time. Mm -hmm. Olympic was great. And I did two clean program. So we were very happy for me It was like small medal, <laughs> you know, for entire team. Then was World Championship right after it in three weeks, probably. Mm -hmm. Short program, 27. I'm out. So I didn't even skate free. Mm -hmm. And I remember even that that was a little like, you know, personal. I remember when I was getting, I, I was so bright that year, you know, mm -hmm. the color, hair, and everything. Not everybody liked that. Mm -hmm. Not everybody liked that. Audience love it, and you know it was fun for them to watch. But some people feel it's too much. So I remember that time when I finished my short program and I going back to hotel, and they don't say, but you can feel how much people were happy that I fall mm -hmm. because finally you fall because you're too bright, you're out of the league, you know. It's so, too much for some people, yeah. That was like, you know, that was, that was good memory. That was good thing, good lesson to put in your head. And then I remember that summer, a regional, I think there was, should be a lot of shows and it was a lot of talks, but because world championship was become zero. Mm. So it was a fall. It was total fall, like to start from zero. And then I remember when I back, I think I rest a few days. After world and I back to the ice. My season starts mm -hmm. ready. Earlier start our program on the elements, on the axles, on the everything. So there was a lot of like inside thing that I've been work on that season and I really try just silently do my work. <laughs> try really move forward myself. So yeah, that was that was very good season. It was very successful, and uh, but I will say I was thankful for that fall because that fall taught me a lot of lessons to become stronger, 
to become see things from different perspective and you know start from zero and kick it back even stronger so how so many skaters when they have um a, a non-ideal performance at let's say a world championships it can really stay with them it can really deter them instead of wanting to go back on the ice they want to go off the ice for a while so so what was it you think that that it, why did it help motivate you instead of unmotivate you because yeah, another so skater, a, it's, another it's skater so could have just retired. Yeah, yeah did, did you like, oh, let did yourself you like get upset and watch Netflix and you know cry about it for a couple of days? Uh-huh. Uh, no, I didn't watch Netflix for sure. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it, it's all about options. Mm-hmm. I mean, as our daily life, we we also have option to choose to be negative or mm-hmm. to be positive. Right. So it's like we choosing those decisions. Mm -hmm. So it was painful. Mm -hmm. But for me, I try to put that pain in work. Mm -hmm. So it it, this sounds very easy and simple now I say a few years (laughs) later. Yeah, because it does not sound easy. (laughs) Yeah. But uh it was tough. It was tough to see like everybody doing big shows, having fun time post Olympic season because everybody was so tired. Well, we all understand the pressure of Olympic season. So everybody vacation shows and the more you look, the more you try to eat it and put it in work. Mm-hmm. You know, so you just try to kick your ass and do the work. <laughs> so when you are upset, like I'm the kind of person where if something, if I have a failure or disappointment, I will let myself be very upset for maybe a brief period of time, a day or two. And then it's like, I can't sit around and do nothing. Like the, the energy to do something becomes like overpowering, you know, and you get motivated. So do you feel the down and then get motivated? Or what is your personality we, like? I think we all feel down. We all yeah. have this like emotion that, you know, when something happened in our life, no matter the competition or what, something in our family, something in our job, right? At first it's like, it's like this. But then, I mean... It's not my words, let's say successful people or mentors' words. Like, we have to sit down and analyze first and understand mm-hmm. why this happened mm-hmm. and what we can learn from that. Mm-hmm. So, make it not happen next time. Mm-hmm. And maybe next time it's still not going to happen, but at least we're moving forward to the past mm-hmm. that's moving us forward and to one day that it might not happen, you mm-hmm. know? And after you analyze that, well, then the next step, you know, try start close your mind and start put it into work. Mm-hmm. So that's really interesting that that I mean, this is such great perspective that you have. That's such like a great personal quality to to have. And we have seen other skaters in different coaching situations be motivated by different styles of coaching as well. Some skaters like that coach that is yelling and saying they can't do something so that the skater then becomes motivated to prove that they can do something. I personally would never do well under that situation and would need someone to encourage me nonstop in order for me to do my best. So uh, what, what kind of coaching approaches did you work best under and did that help create that perspective for you? See, like, you're right. There is there is different coaches have different approach on how to motivate a skater. Sometimes they will use positivity. <laughs> Sometimes negativity, right? Like they might say some harsh word to you, but they just want to motivate you, right? Yeah. So and and it works sometimes, right? So, but you really have to see a skater like he's in the individuality, like what he's best for like maybe like motivation will be suits them better or somebody maybe you have to push a little harder you know Mm -hmm. so it's like even when i traveling in different country i have to change my approach Mm sometimes because as i previously said we human are different so skater are different too and i mean i i don't know what example like uh Let's say like, I don't know, creams, right? Mm-hmm. Or something like, or medical, right? This is my work for Asian. That might not work for Russian. 
and the thing that worked for Russia that might not work in state. So it's a, it's very difficult. That's a difficult thing to find the right approach for the skater. And it, it's not always, you know, we not not everybody do that. Because sometimes it's just one approach and it's applied to everyone. Uh, yes, it's, it, it's work. It's work. But if it's possible, it will be better to individually approach to that person what they need, you know. But it also takes time. You need to learn to the skater to see his content cross. So then later, you really can try to guide the skater to the way that they need. So I want you to boss me around, Misha. I want you to pick out my music and I want you to tell me we are going to do this, this, and this. Don't ask me what I want. I want you to be like really Russian about it. Okay. There, no, there, there is, there is, there is skaters that I work with like that. You know, I like, like that. Okay. You. Yeah. That's... That's fine with me too. Like, you know, and see, I, I am going to tell you what I need you to do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah. So I, on a more serious note, we know that when you were working after that 2015 season, you talked about the improvements. We know that when you were walk, working on the quad jump that you, you know, had an injury to your ankle. So what actually happened there? Well, uh, let's say I want it too much. I work it too much. I work it too hard. I damage it. Okay. <laughs> so I land it. It still goes good. But then... Um, my joints start tearing out. On your landing leg or on your uh, pick leg? Take off. Take off. Pick. pick leg. Yeah. Okay. So that was a hard thing. It's like, you know, either you change it, maybe like Pluchenka said, ah, it's okay. Just change it to titanium one. You'll be fine. <laughs> uh, but I'm like, um, you're getting, thank you, but I'll stay with my own one. Yeah, uh, spasiba, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it was, you know, I very commitment to it. So I spent so much time uh, preparing it, working on it. And, and it's not the first year I was working on it. It was been mm -hmm. a few seasons, but that year I was worked so intense on it. Mm -hmm. And then it's become that uh, I have, uh, yeah, like I can do doubles. It was pain that bad. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of treatment recovery, but it, it was hard. It was one of the, that was actually the hardest season. 16 like uh because i have to withdrew from four continents and it was first time i withdrew from competition like even i had injuries before i was still fighting till the end but this one i'm like double is painful i can't like what are you gonna do in there so we decided to focus on worlds and the boston world championship was very tough like you know your muscle being very weak mm -hmm. that was the, the most difficult thing it's not like said okay just like five triples like you still for me have to do triple axel it was at that time required a lot of power a lot of takeoff energy so but when your muscle being very weak and not working like i've been trying to work my upper body and the part that i can work but still take off power not there mm -hmm. so every jump it was like struggle on the power but i still have to to do it somehow and it was probably the most angry mode competition I get into it because like I feel my body it's like sleeping like mm -hmm. you're standing like you did six minutes warm up you're standing before your short program and your body not reacting like I I was hitting the wall with my fist like till the point I think I not to damage it but it was very painful for a day or two like I really try wake up my body and nerves and muscle system so it can do at least something you know mm -hmm. so i remember when we finished this competition and also that year my grandfather passed away that was huge pressure on the family because um he was in china and after funeral was was finished like two days after we flew back to to la and then mm -hmm. we had to left my grandmother by herself in china mm -hmm. so That's it was funny. a lot of difficulty and pressure for my dad my mom and grandmother and of course we worry about her and then my aunt was there too you know it was like like what are you guys doing you guys left my grandma like left <laughs> the grandma by herself but there is one but we have to go mm -hmm. it was my grandfather wish mm -hmm. no matter what you guys 
Chip let Misha skate do his work. So it was very difficult. Like people, like family, think like it's not right to left my grandma by there, but that's my grandfather' wish.、Mm-hmm. So when I finished the programs, I remember it was like to the sky. I was like grandfather, like I did almost two clean skates, like with with、mm-hmm. no muscles, with bad foot. No practicing much of triple axe. I think I did two triple axe just before competition. That's it, and I pulled pretty much clean programs. And I was like, you know, like thanks God, like give me this <laughs> top season to make me stronger and to let me skate for my grandfather.、Mm-hmm. So I I came up and I was hugged my dad in the locker room and and then I felt and I told him I was like, how happy I'm today. This skate was more for me, more. Then was Olympic,、mm. so it was like so much emotion that was we just can't say by words. But that was a season also that made me stronger as a person. Yeah, because now 2017, that season in the fall, you you came back really strong, and then you made that announcement that at the end of that season you may be retiring before yeah. the Olympics. Yeah. Yes. And so yes. so talk us. Talk us through that announcement, the decision to make a push for the Olympics again, and and that whole decision. So you know,、uh, it wasn't joke. It was a serious decision. Just、uh, the social media went. They changed the topic somehow into the way they prefer. You know, not the way I said it. And I, I really did say like it might be my last competition. It was fifty-fifty question to think if we go further or not. You know, because we try to weigh things very realistically. I try. I、uh, I understand what I'm capable for, how much more I can do, how much more my body let me do, how much more country support we have. Do people need it? Do we need it? And then I have more work to do. And there's future step is preparation. Got you know, future step already got prepared. So there was many things. So we've been very realistically about it, like if we go or not, and as well,、uh, you have to qualify for Olympic. The World Championship before Olympic, it's it's huge pressure, especially for people that not top five. You know,、mm-hmm. like we see, there's so many top ten skaters there out of short program on、mm-hmm. this Olympic qualification round, and and so it was. It's like a mini Olympic for everybody.、Mm-hmm. So we, I've been very realistic about it, and then we really consider that might be my last competition. So, and when we done, people were asking me, said, "Oh, Misha, so、uh, you know, are you done or not?" I'm like, "We're gonna take a few months. We have to just think about it, and we have to think my body condition. We have to think about all to wait up all this little detail, and I have to go back to Uzbekistan." To visit,、uh, to meet with Olympic Committee, to visit our federation, and talk about it. You know, if people need it or not, because basically all this few years, all the training expenses and all these details is on my family. You、yeah. know, so the question is, is you guys need it or not?、Mm. Like country and Olympic Committee. I said, well, I earn this spot. I can give to other people. I'm not probably, you know, like I give, I I bring this spot for the country. You guys can have an option. So it was long, long conversation about this too. So there were probably five different things.、Hmm. Wait up. Go. Three months after decision was doing it. Hmm. Well, I never thought that you could possibly end it there because I remember—I don't know if it was the World Team Trophy. It must have been the World Championships. Did you perform in the gala there, in a sparkly jacket exhibition? Um,、uh, let me see. Ah,、uh, wait, no. Ah,、uh, that was ah、uh, in Finland. World. Yeah. I know it's in the. Okay. Yeah. I just remember you skating. The sparkling one was rapid. I remember you skating as kind of the life of the party at the exhibition, and it just looked like there is no way. It is the、How、Olympics. He loves、yeah. a crowd. There is no、mm-hmm. way. 
that this kid is going to stop skating when it is about to be the Olympics in Korea in less than a year. But he will find a way. You know, you, you know, honestly, that world championship of uh, Finland was was very nervous. Like, mm-hmm. we all nervous. And, you know, all the competition can be different, nervous, less and more. But those one, when I was stepping on the ice, the sharp program i was understanding that's might be my last skate it wasn't mm-hmm. joke like in my mind it wasn't joke like that might be my last skate of my it's career. like a boulder on your so with this kind of part uh... i was went to that back, you know? hmm. and so yeah it was uh, i i understand i understand a lot of people were were thinking that it's not very possible misha really quitting but i was really thinking that might, might be the last thing so yeah that was hard and olympic qualification round of course that extra hmm. So how satisfying was it, you know, getting to the Olympics one more time, you know, going in Korea, you know, did it feel like a bookend kind of to your career? Um, well, of course, it was a very happy feeling to go on the second Olympic, you know, be part of it. But of course, it's a lot of challenge. Mm-hmm. And plus, now you understand that is really final, final, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was... Now, having knowing that you had a career, you know, that you've had this passion for choreography, has it been easier to transition? Because so many athletes talk about the difficulty after they're no longer a competitive athlete feeling uncertainty about what to do, where to go. You know, should they study? Should they perform? Should they coach? Has it been easier for you to, you know, adjust, adjust your identity that now you're the choreographer who's flying all around the world working with everyone, do you still feel that you miss skating yourself? I mean, you know, I guess how easy of a transition has it been? Well, I, I will say not difficult, but because it was a few years of preparation mm-hmm. before today. So, you know, it was it was long process. Like you earlier start thinking what the next step how I can do next step, what I have to do for next step. And so all this kind of detail. So it, it wasn't like one, one day switch, you know, what, what it can be for many skaters. So, and it's endless learning, you know, I mean, I, I still pretty much uh, every day practice my own. And sometimes by the traveling, if I can do, I still, keep practicing and learning and sometime on the eyes, sometime on the eyes, sometime on all the details, sometime for watching. So there's a lot of learning and just keep going because coach and choreographer, well, um, it, it's completely different. It's not about you anymore. It's about them. And uh, thanks to my parents that since little I see my dad, Chinese skating school and my mom, Russian skating school and then singles and nice dance and choreography and techniques. So all together, and I see how they teach kids, and they teach uh, you know senior skaters. So that was made a lot of foundation as a coach, as a so I learned from uh, since little from them a lot. So now it's a step of keep learning, keep learning, and keep learning. Mm-hmm. So I guess what do you have? Have you set goals for yourself as a choreographer? Do you have uh, you know? things that you would like to achieve, you know, things that you would like to do artistically? Well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of those small goals, but uh, of course, one of the main ones I wish to, you know, to help the next generation of skater become even better than us. And they definitely will be better than us. We, we know that. But to be not better in only one particular way, to be better as all round skater, you know, mm-hmm. that they capable to do anything, not only one kind of thing. And of course, to pass the knowledge that the previous generation give to us. And so we, and plus the knowledge we learning now to pass to them, you know, mm-hmm. and the second thing, of course, I wish that we through all the power united, we can make skating more popular around the world, mm-hmm. you know, so amount of all other sports and i know we i mean i've been in um isu congress this summer as well as federation representative and we talk with federation we talk with uh, officials and coaches and 
uh, there's a lot of ideas on the table also from from professional people and from from fans from there's a lot of ideas that we can put on the table to help skating and it's very hard to say what particular one can make skating popular but for me it's just important that of the all power united together we can help skating to grow so in this way we can make it bigger scale sport amount of other sport you know and then we can have more people involved more kids learn skating and then we can have more competition more sponsorship more possibilities more medals you know so more thing that we can bring for skating this is also one of the wish i i wish for that we can make in in the future that's a really beautiful sentiment. Not so many people are so beautiful about their sport right after they retire. <laughs> but that's really great. But you're talking about doing all these great choreographic things, but you are also talking about coaching then. The, just, the, just, just the full-blown coaching element interests you as much as the choreography? Yes. Okay, yes. interesting. And, and do, do the politics and administrative parts of skating also interest you? Like you're talking about ISU conferences and things like that. Is, is leadership well, in that kind of organization of interest? Well, uh, you know, there were some offers actually even from my federation to be like presidential, like federation president or vice president, like those kind of things. I got some of the offers, but you know, I will still say um, it's a lot for me to learn. You know, I'm not saying I'm good, I'm bad. I'm also interested to learn those things. And even when I went to Congress this time, it was a good experience for, for me to see the skating from different perspectives and different angles, you know, and communicate with these people to understand more deeply about skating and the structure and the layers, how it's actually built and how those rules are created, you know, and how they are actually got involved one to another one with another one. So it was, it was also, you know, it's interesting for me to learn. So I, I, I will say, will not have to run that far but step by step for me more important to learn from that and as well as i said of course in hope that the main goal to make skating more popular and not by me only but by our all power mm -hmm. together now i guess what is next for you will we see you performing you know in the shows this spring and summer is that on the list for you choreography you know what's your focus so Great dancing. Actually, I love the hip hop videos. <laughs> we were ah, watching all the hip hop videos in preparation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'll keep working on that. I'll keep working. Uh, so, one second, guys. Let me see. The microphone is out. But oh. <laughs> so one of the things it should be that is um, coming soon. Art on. Mm -hmm. uh, the beginning of next month. So I came back to LA right now and start working on some pro uh, project that they, they give me to do. So that one of the things, it will be more as performer. Then, uh, unfortunately, because I have that, I will not be able to go, like, I have skaters in European and four continents, and I have uh, skaters in competition I will not be able because it will be few weeks of shows. We have 11 shows in Swiss. So, but I'll keep keep my eye on them and I always uh, keep in touch with them and through the media communication we try to keep working together yeah so that will be one of the things um, and then maybe there are few of my skater will be competing in world championship but their their nationals and teams haven't final decided yet so we still have to wait so that might be one of the uh, thing I will possibly do but we're not sure yet mm -hmm. and then there's training camps and uh, choreography coming up too. So yeah, we'll pretty much- So um, nothing, not you have nothing okay. coming up, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you already booked for next season in terms of programs that you'll be making? Pretty much till- Can you tell us? Till May of this year, it's like okay. kind of booked. Yeah, well we look forward so to seeing- If we start from now, like- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Well, I, I, I will try to survive, you know, because yeah. with my crazy schedule, sometimes there's like three, four hours uh, of sleep in the day, like, so, yeah, Yikes. but try my... <laughs> 
Well, we've so enjoyed getting to know you. We wish you so much success and luck, you know, this coming season. And thank you for teaching us that it is indeed Misha G, like the letter G. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay, that's great. The most, that's the most important thing of today's conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the whole point. The whole point. Okay. Thank, <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you All so right, much. Ciao.